Hi, I'm Limo Milan, and in this video, we're going to look at recording automation in Ableton Live. Now, recording automation basically means to capture the motion of a parameter over time. So a parameter being that it could be something to shape a filter or the level of a track or anything that seems appropriate for your, your composition and idea at the time. There's so two main different inputting methods for doing this. One can be that we can grab the parameter with our mouse and track the motion of moving that parameter. The other option is we map a MIDI controller, so a bit more of a hands-on control, and we perform and capture it that way as well. So first we'll work on the laptop itself. Um, this particular method is very useful if you are basically on the move and you don't need to um, have any external gear as well. So I use it quite often while traveling. So automation in terms of capturing it into arrangement view, we need to enable a couple of things. So we first need to enable the MIDI arrangement overdub button. And what this means is if we hit record right now without that enabled, you'll notice that our existing MIDI clip starts being overwritten with a new clip because it thinks we want to record some new parts into our uh, composition. So if I undo that, the MIDI overdub button allows it to just add new information over the existing clip and not overwrite it. The other thing we need to do is arm this project to be ready to receive automation information and record it in. So if I click automation arm, that now means that it will pick up the movements that we make and capture them to be part of the motion of our sound over time. So first I need to find what it is I'm going to alter over time. So I've got kind of a basic lead kind of stab idea that happens by itself before a main drop. And I'm thinking that I might go for having like a reverb that makes it very big and roomy beforehand that suddenly dries up on the actual drop itself. So let me just play you a little bit of it as I add the reverb to give you a sense of, of what's going on here. So I'm playing with the dry wet balance of the reverb, so how much reverb alongside the original signal is heard. Um, and that to my ears as I'm in, you know, interacting with it sounds like it'll work for this uh, song. So basically what I was doing can be captured when I hit record now. So I'm just gonna set the cursor position right to the beginning of my project by double clicking the stop button and then make sure that my reverb is in the position I want it to be in the parameter is in the right place before I record so I don't suddenly have to kind of move it to where I need it to be. So I'm going to start off with the sound pretty much fully wet so it'll sound like a very distant sound that's kind of swallowed by a reverb sound and then I'll kind of play with that over time before we get to bar nine in this case where the main drop will happen. At this point, actually, it's worth uh, pointing out that in terms of recording, you might want to go to the metronome area and set a count in to make sure that you're not starting as soon as you hit the record button. So I've got mine set to one bar. Okay, so that's been captured in. Um, in order to view the automation that's been recorded, we need to make sure that automation mode is enabled. So we can press the A key as a shortcut or just click the little icon here. And you can see all the motions that I've just recorded are now captured here. That was me having the wet control quite high up. And then at bar nine, I suddenly dropped that down to dry. And as you can see, I did a little flourish at the end where I increased it again as well. So we can go in and edit this as well once we've captured it in. So we can highlight a portion, move it around, skew the kind of proportion that's in there, a little bit like an image editor and squeeze and condense or expand the shape that's there. One thing that's worth mentioning with our recorded automation, it's quite different from programmed automation where we've manually put it in, 
is the amount of break points that can be recorded can be very intense and quite hard to edit. So if we control and click, we can choose to simplify that automation by choosing simplify envelope. And you'll notice it will remove a lot of the unnecessary details. Now it does sound slightly different. It isn't exactly the same, but in terms of a headache or handling this amount of information, it's very useful to have there. So that was me capturing via the trackpad. Let's have a look at doing this via a MIDI controller as well. So uh, I need to find something that I want to, to alter. Um, so let's have a look at adding a low pass filter to this sound. Uh, let me just play what that will do to the sound. It'll basically, when I pull it all the way down, it'll remove all of the higher frequencies below the point I've set. So it'll be very muffled and distant. Okay, so that's going to work for what I need it for. So the next thing I need to do is map the controller. Now, there's, there's two kind of different setups that you can have with MIDI controllers. You can have a standard MIDI controller input, or you can have something that's a little bit more adaptive, which is a control surface. So depending on what type of MIDI controller you have, you may find that all these settings that you want to record and, and play in there automatically show up in the like of something like the Push 2 device here. However, if you don't have a, a particularly sort of specific piece of gear that's designed to interact with Ableton Live, you'll need to do MIDI mapping, which is what we're going to do now. So the first thing we need to do is enable the parameters on this device to be able to be seen by Ableton Live, so we can then map it to the parameter we want. So I need to go into preferences at this point, and I need to enable a certain element, which is called remote mode. So if I go into preferences and I go to link and MIDI, I need to find where the device is inputted into the software. So this is the Q25. So I look for the lane that says input Q25, and it's set up at the moment to be enabled for track control because we can play chords and play you know, drum patterns on that controller, but we want to set it up for remote control because we're going to map something and remotely control it. So we enable remote, and then once we've done that, there's a section up in the top right called MIDI map, and if we enable that, anywhere that shows up as blue can be mapped to anything you change on this controller. So I have a, a slider here, or I have a modulation wheel. I can choose dials if I have them on here as well. Um, Whatever is available for you and whatever feels best for you to control, you can map that to the particular parameter inside Ableton Live. So it was the filter cutoff frequency that I want to map. So I'll click that to put focus on that first. And because this has been remote enabled, I can now grab my parameter here. And you'll notice that the number that that is assigned to in terms of the MIDI data that comes out of this controller is now appearing on my map screen. So the important thing to do before you do anything else is turn MIDI map mode off. It's waiting for you to press things and map them to things you click. So you can accidentally set up all sorts of mapping. So as soon as you're done with it, turn it straight back off again. And then now you'll notice if I move that controller, I'm not using the mouse, I'm not using anything on the actual computer, I can control that really easily. So the advantage of doing this is it's more performance orientated, and especially if you come from a background of maybe DJing or just generally playing instruments, you might find it a bit more expressive to be able to play the parameter changes over time. So again, make sure that I'm starting from the beginning of the timeline, double click the stop button, hit record, I'll have my bar introduction, make sure my slider this time is where I want this filter to be from the start. So I think, let me just check, but I think it was around about here. Yeah, around about there sounds good as a starting point, and then I'll slowly bring it in so it becomes brighter over time. Okay, so that's how we can capture both with the mouse or the trackpad or using a separate MIDI controller as well. And we've looked at using the MIDI overdub button to make sure we don't overwrite our MIDI clip in terms of its actual note content. And we've made sure that we've armed 
the um, automation recording section of Ableton Live as well.